Serve your communities. Don't be a part of the problem. We're hiring. We're hiring. Uh, get off that protest line and, and, and put an application in. And we'll put you in your neighborhood and help, we will help you resolve some of the problems you're protesting about. It's been a turbulent year for police forces across the country and the communities they serve. As videos of police shootings of unarmed men continue to make headlines, the debate over use of force has hit an all-time high. Tensions at a boiling point as police officers in Dallas and Baton Rouge were shot dead in revenge attacks this summer. Veteran cops on the beat have admitted unease on the job, but what's going through the minds of the next generation who will swear to protect and serve? To find out, we headed to Monroe College in the Bronx, where their criminal justice program is moving away from the textbook and putting their students on the virtual front line. It might look like a computer game, but this law enforcement training simulator is ensuring that these future cops are making critical split-second life or death decisions. The student is armed with a laser weapon designed to look and feel just like a semi-automatic pistol that police officers use. They're faced with a range of scenarios from traffic stops to house raids, hostage situations and confrontational suspects. As the situation develops, the trainee officer is judged not only on their physical actions, but also their verbal commands. And at the press of a button, the teacher can choose whether to escalate or calm the situation. It gets their critical thinking skills going, and it gets them thinking about scenarios before they even reach the street, which is good, and that's what you want. It's practice. Michael Jordan didn't become a superstar overnight. It's practice, practice, practice. I want them to take the totality of the circumstances into consideration. I want them to look at every aspect. I want them to know the force continuum. Critical in each of these scenarios is that concept of force continuum. It consists of four stages. First and foremost, verbal commands. That's clear instructions from the officer towards the subjects. If that fails to de-escalate the situation, the officer then moves to the next stage, physical force. That's then followed by non-deadly force, which could mean the use of a baton, pepper spray or a taser. But if at any point the student feels as if their life or others is at risk, they turn directly to the fourth stage, deadly physical force. Casey Rivera is up next. She's from the Bronx and hopes to join the NYPD after graduating Monroe. Your mind is racing, thinking about all the possibilities that will happen in the simulator. You try to calm down, not to shake too much. Until the simulator, ha the situation happens, then you have to realize what's going on, what do I do, until that one simple action the perpetrator or victim does, then you have to think in consideration, oh, what do I do, do I shoot, do I not shoot? Casey and her partner are on patrol and are called to the scene of a shooting. Upon arrival, it becomes apparent that their fellow officer has already been hit. That's an interesting situation because when you came around the corner, you spoke to your police officer there, your fellow police officer, and they immediately told you that they had been shot. So you know that there are firearms in this situation and it's a, a hostile situation. So do you immediately there at that point know that you're going to have to fire a, a, a bullet at some point? Are you of the thought that you can still perhaps de-escalate the situation and let it unfold peacefully? Um, definitely, I would have pulled out my firearm because they weren't scared to shoot the first officer that responds. So what, what would I think if, because of me, they would de-escalate the situation? I'm putting out my firearm because I know they're not scared to shoot that officer, so they might shoot me or my partner. Because you never know if the perpetrator, when you turn the corner, is right there in your face or he's right there in the corner. You really don't know. Once you're in that corner, you have to see the situation and you got to act quick because my life or the, my partner's life can be taken in one second. When it comes to using deadly force, the students are taught not only when to shoot, but where to shoot. And the message here is clear. Aim for center mass, the largest part of the body. You know, as a police officer, you don't have that second chance. Once you withdraw your weapon and you shoot, it is what it is here. It feels so real. It gives you the same adrenaline that a police officer will feel outside. 
So you look at the situation differently. A lot of times people question, oh, why did he shoot? Or, you know, they want to make the officer seem like the bad guy. But when you're put in situations that is life or death, you think about your family, you think about going home, and really you don't know what's going to happen. The level of scrutiny and criticism facing the profession these students are preparing to join is immense and it becomes abundantly clear speaking with them that the national debate over policing and race relations is at the forefront of their minds as they embark on their training. I'm in a constant battle between um, the two uh, looks on this because I am minority, I, uh, I do live in a poor neighborhood, but I'm pursuing a law enforcement career. I have a fear, I believe. We are experiencing the war on cops and Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, everyone's lives matter. It's not only about one race or one group of people, it's about everyone. We all have families. We all want to live to see the next day. And I actually think that the simulation should be open to the community. I don't know if it's just from the school or if we can have it in a community center and just have civilians do it because it really changes your outlook on situations when you're put in that predicament of what you're going to do. Is your life or their life? Well, I took Francesca up on that offer and had the opportunity to experience the simulation firsthand. I've been called out to assist a fellow officer who's been shot in the leg. Around the brick, around the bricks over there. Please show yourself with your hands up. That's him. All right, I need you to come out. I need you to have your hands up. Put anything you have in your hands down. So, police officer, I need you to come out immediately with your hands up. I'm unable to de-escalate the situation, and the suspect pulls the trigger before I decide to take action. I return fire with a series of shots, all of them miss. The gunman eventually surrenders his firearm to the floor. Even taking part in the simulation myself, it's virtual reality, it's not real life, but pulling the trigger, I myself felt adrenaline and emotion taking part in an exercise like this. Um, to an extent, it must be quite draining on a student's mindset and mentality. Why is it so important to have them engage in an exercise, a simulation like this, at such an early stage in their policing career? So they know how it feels. So they know how it feels to when, if you do shoot somebody who you thought had a firearm that doesn't have a firearm, and you're like, wow, you know, I just shot somebody that didn't have a firearm. Or even if the person did have a firearm and you're shooting somebody, you're taking somebody's life. No police officer wants to take anybody's life. It kind of takes you on an emotional roller coaster. And these students somewhat get that feeling of, you know, this is, this is not a joke. This is, this is, this is real here. And I have the power of this city or the state gives me the power to use these types of force and you know I have to make sure I use this type of force in, in, in a uh, you know in, in an appropriate manner.